Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I'm back to answer a question that's asked frequently. And I really don't have the opportunity to uh, to discuss it, but I thought I would do a little video, and, and knowing me, I'm going to give you the long answer to a short question. But uh, I thought it would take the time during the winter now to uh, answer the question, what do you fish for in New Jersey? And uh, a lot of folks that are watching this channel are... Uh, from other parts of our state and are from other countries and are very much interested in in why we have so much time available in the winter time, I guess, to go fix fishing reels and why we're out on the water when we can be uh, during the, uh, the spring, summer, and fall months. So I uh, thought I would take that time and let's start with a, a basic geographic uh, representation of the wonderful state of New Jersey. I've been a lifelong resident here and uh, it's a uh, it's a great place to be. New Jersey, as you can tell, is uh, located in the central uh, part of the Atlantic coast. We're about midway between uh, Maine and the Carolinas, and uh, we're in the North uh, North Atlantic Fishery Management Area. Uh, we have a hundred and thirty miles of coastline, and we uh, we have some cities that we're wedged between with New York and Philadelphia kind of bordering our states and, of course, to the north, Boston and Baltimore to the south. And it is a rich fishing area and a rich cultural area from the history of fishing. So uh, I'm going to move over to a secondary map here, kind of just show you how much water we really have around the state. Uh, the blue parts being the water. It's mostly Atlantic Ocean, but we have to our north, we have the Raritan Bay, which is a confluence of the Hudson River and the uh, Raritan River joining around New York City. And uh, that provides a, a wonderful fishery area. And uh, by the map, I would be right there if anybody's wondering where I am located in the state of New Jersey. And we have access to the Raritan Bay and a quick trip to the northern extremes of our coastline from a uh, uh, salt water, getting out in the ocean, deep water kind of fishing environment. New Jersey has 130 miles of beach line. We have barrier islands and we have a lot of estuaries, and including uh, some great bays like the Barnicut Bay and Great Egg Harbor down by the Atlantic City area. And then to our south, the, the tip of New Jersey is known as Cape May. And the bay that it surrounds is the, Bel the Delaware Bay being the outflow from the Delaware River, which uh, Philadelphia is located on the Delaware River. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of water and a lot of history. For example, did you know that the first whaling industry started in New Jersey down in the Cape May area off of the Delaware Bay? Uh, that was back in the 1600s, New Jersey being an original colony, of course had uh, some early settlers, and whaling started in Cape May before uh, it went up north uh, uh, to the Cape Cod area where it's gained more renown. Even today, if you're vacationing in New Jersey in the Atlantic City area or Cape May area, uh, you can jump on a boat and go whale watching. It's, uh, it's still a dominant uh, uh, area where whales are present and it's not unusual if you're out on a party or a head boat uh, doing some fishing, particularly in the spring or the fall, it's not unusual to see whales, depending on what fishing ground you are on. The other thing that's interesting, historically, back in the very late uh, 1800s, early 1900s, New Jersey was the caviar capital of the world. It, uh, the Delaware Bay was the home of the Atlantic sturgeon. The Atlantic sturgeon often grew to 800 pounds and 15 foot in length. They were very long-lived uh, fish. Uh, living 70 and 80 years, uh, and they uh, they were harvested, and they were over-harvested. They, uh, they were harvested for their row, which was caviar, and it really depleted the fish stocks in, uh, in the early 1900s to the point where it could no longer sustain an industry. Well, when that happened, uh, the folks um, uh, left. The fish stock itself took forever to recover, and it's to the point now where it's a um, uh, tar it's a um, mandated or a moratorium on it, uh, where you haven't been able to take an Atlantic sturgeon since the late 1990s, 
and the federal government and the marine fisheries are trying to rebuild that fish stock. And because they live so long, it takes a long time for that fish stock to recover. And uh, we're still seeing a, a moratorium on those that is projected to be through the 2030s. So don't go, you can't target the fish, you can't harvest the fish. So don't go Atlantic sturgeon fishing in New Jersey. It's, uh, it's illegal at this point. So uh, that's a brief history. Uh, if you look at New Jersey from a commercial standpoint, uh, we are the seventh uh, ranked state in terms of tons of uh, seafood uh, produced, and we are the ninth in terms of revenue. So there's a lot of commercial interests out there taking advantage of the waters. And uh, believe it or not, interestingly, even for a lifelong New Jersey, in the number one harvest of uh, uh, fish and marine life in New Jersey is, is shellfish. We are renowned for the sea scallop. That's the number one take. The number two take is uh, quahog and surf clams. So by and large, the, the, there's no question about it. It's not fin fish, it's shellfish. And uh, from a state standpoint, back in the Delaware Bay, as well as the, uh, the Raritan Bay, at one point we had very large oyster beds and oyster harvests and unfortunately those uh, came uh, um, became depleted because of disease rather than harvesting and uh, they're still trying to recover those today there's a lot of projects underway where they're trying to build up um, oyster beds and the like to try to replace them but those uh, those species are subject to uh, marine bacteria and disease and unfortunately we haven't been able to rebuild them of late so let's look at um, some stuff the the last stuff was actually courtesy of a Rutgers professor Eleanor Boschenik and uh, she's uh, she's part of the marine extensions that we see here in New Jersey and uh, thank you to uh, Eleanor for all of that information that she's provided well, what do we fish for? Interestingly enough, uh, there are three or four uh, targeted species out there. We'll start with the sexy ones and we'll kind of go down to what everybody else fishes for, if you will. But uh, in uh, the, uh, the last reporting period, we had almost one million anglers fishing and they were fishing for, uh, they took over four million trips in a year and 40% of those anglers came from out of state. Well, that's easy enough to see. Uh, New Jersey's mid, midway in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, it's easy to reach New Jersey from Delaware, from Pennsylvania, and from New York. And depending on where the fish are and when the fish are, uh, folks are gonna come over here and join us. Also at 130 miles of, um, of beachfront and uh, sandy shores, a lot of folks will come down on vacation and, and make a trip of it in terms of going fishing. So let's look at, uh, at what we fish for and uh, why that may be important and why uh, maybe why we have the time now uh, to go uh, clean up our reels and reline our rigs and uh, get ready for the, uh, the fishing season to start. So the sexy one is the striped bass. It's uh, been under a lot of pressure of late. It's a, uh, it's a very targeted uh, game fish in our area and uh, it has a, um, a spring and fall movement kind of a pattern and New Jersey is right in the middle of where the uh, striped bass spawn. So if I look at a uh, another one courtesy of uh, Rutgers, Rutgers is our state university, it'll show you that there's three major spawning grounds for the uh, the striped bass. The, the vast majority, the, the number one is the Chesapeake Bay followed by number two and three, which is the Delaware River and the Hudson River. While the Delaware River is our southern tip and the Hudson River is our northern entrance into the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, the striped bass migrations start in the spring as they come out of the, uh, as they spawn, and then they, they head north. That's the yellow line up there. The striped bass will head all the way up to Maine. Uh, they're water, sensitive, water temperature sensitive. And then in the fall, they'll start their, their trek back down as the water temperatures cool and uh, repeat the cycle. They'll head inshore, they'll spawn, they'll go out to sea and uh, head up north. So that's kind of the cycle of a striped bass. 
We get tremendous runs of striped bass in the spring and in the fall, just when uh, when they're coming out of spawn and when they're uh, they're returning to spawn. And uh, striped bass have been under tremendous pressure uh, from a fishing standpoint. It, the target or the trophy fish for the striped bass, the ones you always hear about are the 40 or the 50 pounders. Well, they happen to be the females and the females that are ripe for spawn and uh, the ones that will continue to uh, on the survival of the species. Well, the fisheries management lately has uh, just put in slot fish limits so you cannot harvest a um, a large female any longer. If you're fishing in New Jersey, you're restricted to a fish between 28 and 36, I believe, inches long, which usually is a seven to an eight year old striped bass. And anything longer, uh, older than that or longer than that has to be released. And this year they're implementing for the first time the use of circle hooks. Uh, if you're gonna fish striped bass, you must use a circle hook because the discard rate when you um, when you release a striped bass it doesn't always survive uh, and it doesn't always survive because of either handling or the way it may have been hooked or the time out of water or the trauma in the landing of it so uh, they're sensitive to that and they've uh, not only put the restrictions on the size that you can keep but now they're they're putting a restriction on the tackle that you must use uh, subject I guess of course to fine if uh, if that's the issue. So the first uh, one, the, the sexy one that everybody's always going to be talking about is that striped bass and the one that everybody catches for food and we had talked about the types of anglers out there but the food fish is the summer flounder and the summer flounder by far represents the largest take of the uh, the poundage or the tonnage I guess of the fish uh, taken in New Jersey. Uh, we are a primary part of the, um, uh, the habitat for these fish and these fish are uh, sought after not only for the food but for the, uh, uh, the abundance of them. They spawn in late fall, they winter in the outer edges so we'll never see one of these guys. Uh, they're on the outer edges of the continental shelf in the winter time. They come in in the spring to spawn uh, I'm sorry, they come in in the spring with the young and to feed. They're around for uh, the summer and then they leave uh, as the water temperatures cool uh, to go out to the, the shelf to spawn in, in late fall. So uh, the problem with this one is that this, uh, again, it's the most popular fish. They get overfished. We've increased our limits of the, uh, the size limits and we, we've reduced the bag limits on these fish over time to try and manage that. Unfortunately, like the striped bass, the larger fish, the ones that are 18 inches and longer, which is the, the current uh, uh, size limit, those are all female. And uh, they've done some studies and they found that uh, while the females are coming in uh, to, uh, to feed and uh, the like in, the, uh, in our waters, the males are staying out on the continental shelf for the most part. So the females are the ones coming in, the females are the larger ones, and with a size limit of 18 inches and above, you're mostly uh, catching and keeping females, and that's probably contraintuitive to replenishing your, your fishing stock. So that's an issue, and the other issue is on that, uh, what we call the discard rate, but uh, the ones that are released under 18 inches, the mortality rate is very high. So they're, they're trying to figure out what to do here. There's a thought that says let, uh, let folks keep more, uh, increase your bag limits, lower your size limits, and uh, restrict that uh, 18 and inch and above kind of females to allow for the breeding and the stock regeneration. So that's the, uh, the summer flounder. We call them fluke in New Jersey. And uh, those are uh, the most popular food fish that's sought after uh, by the recreational angler. Next up then is everybody's uh, fish, I guess. It's the, uh, the black sea bass. This one's available up and down the, uh, the North uh, Atlantic coast. I believe you can find these all the way down in Florida, all the way up to Maine. They like rocky habitats. And uh, this is a success story in terms of fish management in New Jersey. Uh, we were really depleted in this stock about uh, a dozen years ago. And this one has worked its way back. 
And uh, th so this one is substituted for a lot of the fish stocks that have left because of changes in the ocean climates. Uh, the water in New Jersey uh, has the widest uh, change in um, temperatures. In the winter, you can get sea ice here. And in the summer, with the Gulf Stream close to New Jersey, you can get very, very warm water, which supports a late fall uh, tuna run uh, in our canyons off the state. So uh, a lot of the stocks that are water sensitive, like cod and uh, whiting and uh, red hake, which is ling, they've, they've moved north because our waters are getting too warm. And we're starting to see uh, southern species that we haven't seen, uh, like croaker and cobia, are starting to come into our southern waters. And that was historically uh, a fish that would never make it up this far. So climate change is affecting it. But uh, in the case of the black sea bass, uh, they were totally overfished. And uh, there were some restrictions put in place. This, uh, this fish uh, is, a, is a water sensitive one. At 40 degrees, they move inland uh, in terms of uh, water. They winter over in very deep water. They do a summer spawn. Then they come in as the water warms up and they go out as the water cools down. So 40 degrees seems to be uh, the right temperature for them. They like rocky bottoms and sea structure. Uh, very popular with us as recreational anglers. Most of the time it requires us uh, being in a boat to go get them but they do uh, habitat around pier structure as well as uh, jetties. And then finally, I think the, the game fish for the, the average person that we fish for in New Jersey is the bluefish, a uh, great fighting fish. It's a, uh, it's a fish that can get pretty big. It, uh, it can get up to uh, 31 inches and it can get up to uh, uh, 20 pounds or 25 pounds easily. Uh, they are highly migratory species. They run from North Carolina up to Maine. They are very temperature sensitive as well. They kind of run in that 50 degree uh, water temp band. They have uh, seasonal spawn. The ones that are in New Jersey uh, spawn around um, June. We actually call it the June swoon because you'll have them uh, heading north during the uh, the spring run, which we, we look forward to in early April and May, and then they kind of just disappear. They go out and they spawn, and uh, some stay around, some head up north further, and uh, they come back down in the fall as the temperature waters start to cool, and we get that uh, late fall run as well. So in all of those cases, this the striped bass is wintering over in uh, offshore. The uh, summer flounder are offshore, the bluefish are down below the Carolinas, and the black sea, sea bass are in 250 to 500 feet of water in the, uh, in the continental shelf, which all says that uh, we're not doing much fishing this time of year. So if you ask me today, what are you fishing for? Uh, I guess I'm fishing for a reason to do a video because uh, all we can do really is tune up our tackle and get ready to go. And even the ones that used to be our winter fish stock, the whiting, the cod, uh, and the like, uh, they, they're not here. The waters aren't cold enough, and uh, they've, they've moved. Our, our fish stock, interestingly enough, has moved up to Massachusetts to uh, the, the Great uh, the Grand Banks. And the fish stock for cod that were in the Grand Banks, they've moved all the way up to the Gulf of Maine. And the cod stocks in the Gulf of Maine have moved up uh, off of Iceland and Greenland now because of the water sensitivity, uh, temperature sensitivity. So uh, that's what we fish for. What's what, kind of what's in store for us in New Jersey, if you will? Uh, again, from uh, Eleanor Bochanik, uh, we've got a couple of challenges. We've talked a little bit about climate change. It's real. The, uh, the ocean temperature waters are warming around here. We are seeing more southern species and we're seeing the exit of uh, temperature sensitive species, uh, whether it's cold or warmer. Uh, interestingly enough, the surf clams, one our second, uh, second biggest commercial harvest is actually moving north. And who would think that uh, that, that would be the case? But uh, we're seeing less surf clams now. Uh, we're seeing uh, issues here in terms of fishery management with the discards, with the ability and survival rates of those. We have to figure out a way to deal with those. Uh, we're seeing loss of our party and charter boat fleets. 
as these bag limits are coming in, as the size restrictions are increasing, uh, it just doesn't make it worth it for an average person to go spend $100 to go out on a, on a day trip and be allowed to keep one fish. Or, or maybe that the limits are so great that they, they catch 20 fish, but they can't keep any of them. And that's, that's discouraging to those that are looking for uh, that experience as a consumptive angler. And uh, our party boats and our charter boats are, uh, are suffering because of that. And not to mention the pandemic, where they were restricted in the number of customers that they could bring on. The commercial fleets have to go further north and they have to go further out in order to, uh, to get their quotas. And uh, that at some point in time becomes non-economic. And interestingly enough, the last one that we're wrestling with at the moment uh, is wind farms. Uh, and that, that's just come up. Uh, there's a proposal to put a, a huge wind farm complex off the coast of uh, uh, Atlantic City. And nobody knows what the environmental or the fishing impact will be to that. So this has kind of been a... a, a a long answer to a short question, what do you fish for in New Jersey? Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've uh, learned something from it. And I hope you come down to New Jersey or come up to New Jersey or, or come east to New Jersey or wherever you may be and enjoy some of the fishing that we do have during the seasons that uh, we are able to fish. So with that, I, uh, I thank you for watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.